today, we are taking a deep dive into insanity with one of the worst serial killers to date, Gary Hilton. Gary Hilton had a difficult upbringing and got involved in a crime at an early age. Born with schizophrenia and in Atlanta, Georgia on November 26, 1946, Gary Hilton allegedly had a rough childhood. When he was only 13 years old, he shot and brutally injured his stepfather, Nilo, who he believed had abducted his mother. The stepfather wanted to give Gary another chance at life, therefore, no criminal charges were brought against him. Instead, Gary was sent to a mental health facility. Hilton enlisted in the U.S. Army but was discharged after complications. As a young adult, Hilton joined the U.S. Army and excelled as a paratrooper. He served in West Germany, serving as a member of the Davy Crockett platoon. However, he experienced a schizophrenic episode in 1967, which resulted in his honorable discharge from the military and subsequent admission to a psychiatric facility once again. According to sources, he was once detained for driving under the influence, possessing an unregistered firearm, drugs, and 21 charges of soliciting. John and Irene Bryant on October 21st, 2007, a retired couple of avid hikers living in Horseshoe, North Carolina, John Davis Bryant and Irene Woods Bryant, left for a hike through Piscot National Forest, leaving their parked maroon Ford Escape at the Yellow Gap Road near US Route 276. After not hearing from them for two weeks, family members reported the couple is missing to the Henderson County Sheriff's Office who promptly launched a search for the Bryants, consisting of more than 30 volunteers, cadaver dogs, and a helicopter. Through examining their phone records, it was learned that John had attempted to call 911 on the day of their disappearance, but the signal was lost and the call was dropped. Irene Bryant loved the outdoors and nature so much she begged a neighbor to call if he ever spotted a deer in the area so she could slip up for a peek. Her husband John Bryant's passion for hiking was so strong that he conquered the entire 2,000 plus miles of the Appalachian Trail, hiking in short stints over a period of years, his dedication never flagging despite pain from an arthritic back. Even into their 80s, the couple pursued their love of the outdoors hiking weekly, and taking spur-of-the-moment overseas trips to see exotic locations. Irene Bryant was 84. Her husband would have turned 80 in late October. But their love of nature ended in tragedy, authorities say, when the Bryants apparently crossed paths with Gary Michael Hilton. Police suspect the 61-year-old drifter encountered them just 20 miles from their home after the Bryants drove out for a hike in Pisgah National Forest, at the peak of the fall color season in October. Irene Bryant's body was found three weeks later, covered with a few twigs and leaves, just 50 paces from where the couple had parked their Ford Escape on Yellow Gap Road. She died of blunt trauma to the head. Jack Bryant's body has not been found, but a few days after they went missing, Someone used their ATM card to withdraw $300 from a bank in Bucktown, Tennessee. Video from a security camera shows a shadowy figure wearing a hooded yellow raincoat. A delivery truck driver in Ducktown told the Times News, a Western North Carolina newspaper, that she recalls seeing Hilton in the area at that time. Transylvania County Sheriff David Mahoney says Hilton is a suspect in Irene Bryant's death and Jack Bryant's disappearance, and has a scheduled 2 p.m. press conference today concerning the case. I think it'll be what everybody thinks we're going to say, Mahoney said. He is the suspect. The Atlanta area suspect, described by many as eccentric and mean-spirited, has been charged with the decapitation killing of 24-year-old Meredith Emerson, 
and went hiking in the North Georgia mountains on New Year's Day. He is also a suspect in the murder of Cheryl Hodges Dunlap, 46, whose body was found in Florida's Apicalola National Forest on December 15th. North Carolina officials are also looking at a possible link between Hilton and the 2005 disappearance of a Florida woman in Bryson City, North Carolina. While Florida police are searching for connections with the November 27th decapitation of a man in Ormond Beach. On November 10th, 2007, the search party located the body of a woman on the Barnett Branch Trail covered with leaves. Suspecting that it might belong to Irene, they sent it to the state medical examiner's office in Chapel Hill to perform an autopsy. Three days later, the body was positively identified as that of Irene, who had been bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. As this was now considered a homicide perpetrated on federal land, the FBI launched an investigation with a reward of $10,000 to whoever could provide information leading to the killer. Simultaneously, it was revealed that a bank card belonging to the Bryants had been used to withdraw $300 from an ATM in Ducktown, Tennessee. With the surveillance camera showing an older Caucasian man wearing a yellow rain jacket whose hood was obscuring his face. By this time, John was still considered a missing person, possibly abducted by whoever had killed his wife. On February 3rd, 2008, Mark Waldrop, a hunter, discovered a skull in Nantahala National Forest just off the Forest Service Road known as the Switchbacks. After calling the local deputy for assistance, the duo investigated the scene. Upon closer investigation, a pelvis and spine were located about 20 yards from the skull. Since there was no clothing or identification near the remains, the bones were sent to the medical examiner in Chapel Hill to identify the descendant. After two days, it was positively identified as that of John Bryant. Cheryl Dunlap On February 28, 2008, a Leon County grand jury indicted Gary Michael Hilton for the first-degree murder of Cheryl Dunlap between December 1st and December 15th, 2007. Kidnapping, grand theft of a motor vehicle, and grand theft of currency. Hilton pleaded not guilty on March 14, 2008. Hilton proceeded to a jury trial commencing on February 2, 2011. Cheryl Dunlap, 46, was last seen alive on December 1, 2007. That morning, Dunlap called a friend, Keona Hill, and made arrangements to have dinner with her that evening. That afternoon, Dunlap went to Leon Sinks to read, where she was seen by Michael and Vicki Shirley at approximately 1.30 p.m. The Shirleys described that Dunlap was wearing jeans and a sweater and carrying a hardback book. Dunlap did not arrive for dinner that evening and was missed at church the following morning by Tanya Land. Land went to Dunlap's residence and found her dog, but noticed that her car was missing, so she called the police. Stephen Ganey, of the Wakula County Sheriff's Office, took the missing person report on December 3rd, 2007. Dunlap's car, a white Toyota Camry, was found on December 3rd, 2007, on the side of Crawfordville, highway parked near the woods. The car had deliberate tire punctures in the sidewall that was later identified as a bayonet piercing. On December 1st, the car had received a disabled vehicle ticket from Florida Highway Patrol Trooper Brian Spigner. Ganey testified that it appeared that someone had driven into the woods with all four tires intact and punctured the tire after the car had been parked. Dunlap's purse was recovered in her car but no money was found. Dunlap's Ameris bank account records revealed that Dunlap cashed a check with a drive through teller at 11.17 a.m. on December 1st. The records further revealed that three cash withdrawals were made at the ATM at, Han at Hancock Bank on West Tennessee Street on December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, totaling $700. 
In addition, two attempted withdrawals were declined because they exceeded the daily limit. The video from the security camera at the bank showed that the person making the transaction was wearing a blue and white patterned long sleeve shirt, glasses, a hat, and a makeshift mask from tape. Dunlap's body was discovered on December 15th by Ronnie Rents while he was hiking in the Apicalola National Forest. Dunlap's body was near a forest road and had been covered with some brush and limbs. Additionally, her head and hands had been removed. Dunlap's body was identified using a sample of thigh muscle. Dr. Anthony Clark, an associate medical examiner, performed the autopsy. Dr. Clark opined that Dunlap's head and hands had been removed by an instrument with a sharp blade and that the dismemberment occurred post-mortem. The cause of death was not able to be determined, but Dr. Clark opined that it was likely to have been a violent homicide. Additionally, Dr. Clark noted that there was a significant pre-mortem bruise located on Dunlap's middle to lower back and that the bruise was not consistent with a normal fall injury. Dr. Clark estimated that Dunlap's body could have been in the woods for 7 to 15 days. Dr. Clark testified that his best estimate was that Dunlap died between December 5th and December 8th, 2007. On January 9th, 2008, investigators found what they believed to be the remains of Dunlap's head and hands in a fire pit at Joe Thomas campsite approximately 7 miles from where her body had been found. The bone fragments were charred because of the burn damage. No DNA was recoverable from the fragments. Dr. Anthony Falsetti, a forensic anthropologist, opined that there were two hands represented, that the bones were from an adult, and that the bones were from a person with small hands. Several witnesses testified that they saw or encountered Gary Michael Hilton during the time period surrounding Dunlap's disappearance. In late November 2007, George Ferguson encountered Hilton on L.L. Wallace Road. Hilton asked Ferguson for a jump start because his van, a white Chevrolet Astro, would not crank. Ferguson testified that it did not appear to him that Hilton actually needed the assistance. Ethan Davis provided similar testimony that sometime in late November 2007, Hilton stopped him and asked him for help starting his vehicle. Davis declined. Sean Matthews also encountered Hilton in late November near his L.L. Wallace Road camp. Hilton appeared to be familiar with the area and told Matthews about a nearby sinkhole. On December 1st, 2007, Celeste Hutchins saw Hilton on Crawfordville Highway, not far from Leon Sinks. Hutchins testified that Hilton was rummaging through a white Camry on the other side of the road. On December 10th, 2007, Loretta Mayfield spoke to Hilton at a convenience store on Crawfordville Highway. Mayfield testified that Hilton was wearing a blue and white patterned shirt. Hilton was also wearing something on his left side that looked like a large knife holder. Mayfield testified that the shirts she saw Hilton wearing looked like the one in the ATM security video. On December 11, 2007, Stephen Prosser saw Hilton at the Apicalola National Forest. On December 12, 2007, Michael Travis saw Hilton in the forest near Bloxham Cutoff and then saw him again on December 14th. On December 18th, 2007, Teresa Johnson saw Hilton in Bristol, Florida where Hilton told her that she looked like Dunlap and that it was too bad about that girl getting murdered. Meredith Emerson has been described by friends as a skilled hiker in good physical shape, but freezing temperatures in the teens with a wind chill near zero on both Tuesday and Wednesday night had initially concerned authorities combing the area. Authorities now want to identify and talk to a man described as a silver-haired white male, about 60 years old, perhaps with missing teeth, who was seen in the area where Emerson was hiking the day she disappeared. Some witnesses 
reported to authorities seeing the man talking to Emerson. The man was wearing a yellow jacket and carrying a backpack. A dark red colored large breed dog answered to the man's call of Dandy. The man may be driving a white minivan with Georgia license plates. Emerson's snow-covered 1995 Chevrolet Cavalier was found early Wednesday at a trailhead at the foot of Blood Mountain, a popular hike that is part of Georgia's section of the Appalachian Trail. Emerson was reported missing after she failed to show up for work. High winds prevented a Georgia State Patrol helicopter from searching the area Wednesday, and the search was called off at sundown before resuming this morning. The Union County Sheriff's Office led an agency in Emerson's search. Initially considered the investigation purely a missing persons case, citing no evidence as foul play. But Emerson's friends had grown increasingly concerned, and her parents arrived from her native Colorado to assist authorities after a dog's leash, water bottle, and pair of sunglasses were found near Emerson's parked car, according to ABC News, Atlanta affiliate WSB-TV. Another hiker reportedly told officials that he saw a man with similar police baton clipped to a belt as he hiked the same trail where he had seen Emerson and her dog, Ella. Authorities would not confirm a report that the baton was found near Emerson's car, but did say he was carrying a sheath of some type. She's an experienced hiker and a blue belt in martial arts, Emerson's roommate Julia Karen Bowers told WSB-TV. She's athletic and has a good head on her shoulders, so we're just hoping for the best. Kimberly Verdone, an investigator for the Union County Sheriff's Office, told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution Wednesday that Emerson's car was first spotted by an employee at Vogel State Park. The park sits at the base of Blood Mountain in the Chattahoochee National Forest. On New Year's Day of 2008, 24-year-old sales manager Meredith Hope Emerson decided to go for a hike along the Freeman Trail on Blood Mountain in Georgia's Vogel State Park. She was accompanied by her dog, Ella, and according to several witnesses, they had observed a mysterious older man with his dog following her. On January 3, 2008, authorities located her 1995 Chevrolet Cavalier, where they found various items such as her water bottle, a dog leash, and a police baton. That day, further investigation into the man seen following Emerson revealed that he was 61-year-old Hilton, a local drifter known for his strange behavior and vicious temper. He often walked his dog Dandy along the trail. Since this revelation, he was announced as a person of interest in the case, with the police requesting that they officially interrogate him about the case. A day after this announcement, Emerson's dog Ella was found wandering at a Kroger parking lot and returned to Emerson's family. On January 5, 2008, authorities located numerous items belonging to Emerson inside a dumpster near a Quick Trip parking lot in Cumming. Her bloodied clothing, wallet, driver's license, a University of Georgia ID card, and a bloodstained car seat belt. On January 4th, 2008, three days after Emerson was last seen, a witness at a Chevron gas station called DeKalb Police and stated that the guy that you're looking for is cleaning out his van. The police quickly arrived on the scene and were able to stop the accused before he could bleach the interior of his van. Crime scene analyst obtained blood evidence that was matched to Emerson's DNA. Gary Michael Hilton was subsequently arrested and charged with Emerson's murder. The prosecution agreed to take the death penalty off the table if Hilton would lead investigators to her body. Hilton agreed and successfully led investigators to Emerson's body. Hilton claimed he had asked Emerson for her debit card pin and that when she failed to give him the correct number, he kept her for four days before killing her. Hilton stated he could not bring himself to kill her dog, and that when it came to the woman herself, it was hard. You gotta remember that we spent several good days together. Suspected Victims 
In addition to the homicides mentioned above, Hilton had been investigated and remains a suspect in the following unsolved murders. On September 7th, 1997, several human bones and personal items were found in Pisgah National Forest, scattered near a campground. The descendant was eventually identified as 51-year-old hiker Judy Smith, who was last seen in Philadelphia five months earlier on April 10th, 1997. It has been speculated that she might have been a victim of Hilton, who had left one of his victims in a similar condition near where Smith's body was discovered. 20-year-old Jason Andrew Knapp, a Clemson University student, was last seen by his roommate at their residence in University Terrace Apartments in South Carolina on April 11, 1998. His roommate said that Knapp was watching a movie at approximately 10.30 p.m. that evening. Authority found Knapp's white 1990 Chevrolet Beretta abandoned nine days later on April 21, 1998. The vehicle was parked at Table Rock State Park in Pickens County, South Carolina. He was declared legally dead in 2018. Due to similarities to his other known crimes, Hilton was proposed as a suspect, but he denied any connection to Knapp. Hairdresser Patrice Marie Tambor Andres, 38, disappeared from her hair salon, Tambor's Trim and Tan, in Cumming, Georgia, on April 15, 2004, between 11.37 and 11.50 a.m. Her remains were found on December 6, 2005, in Dawson County, Georgia. Hilton was known to have been in Forsyth County because he had stopped for a traffic violation there. In his statements to investigators, Hilton told him that he would usually go to hair salons to ask for money, usually around lunchtime. Investigators were unable to find an alibi for him on the day of Patrice's disappearance. Twenty-six-year-old Rosanna Miliani, a hiker from Miami, Florida, was last seen at approximately 12 p.m. at the Ramada Inn Hotel in Cherokee, North Carolina. Miliani called her father from the hotel that day and told him that she was going hiking on the Appalachian Trail. A store clerk who read about Miliani's disappearance claimed she sold a backpack to Miliani and an unidentified white man in his 60s in Bryson County in 2005. Following Hilton's arrest, the store clerk contacted authorities to note the similarities between Hilton and the suspect. Michael Scott Lewis, 27, a South Daytona resident, went missing on November 21, 2007. A few weeks later on December 6, his dismembered remains were found by a fisherman in Ormond Beach, packed in black bags which had been dumped in the Tomoko River. The remains were not immediately connected to Lewis, with identification occurring several days later at a lab in California. His head was never located. Authorities have stated that while Hilton remains a suspect in the murder and was not in the area at that time, he is not the only one. Five hours after police found the items linked to Emerson, Hilton was arrested thanks to two anonymous phone tips, which claimed that he was vacuuming his van at a local establishment. He was transferred to the county jail, where he was subsequently charged with kidnapping based on the material evidence connecting him to the case. While he was being held at a federal prison in Atlanta, the search for Emerson's body continued in a 90 square mile area of the Chattahoochee National Forest. Upon examining his van, the same 2001 Chevrolet Astro is reported earlier in tips by witnesses. Authorities noticed that it was missing its rear car seat belt, which matched the one located among Emerson's personal items. In exchange for dropping the death penalty against him, Hilton agreed to reveal where he had disposed of Emerson's remains, leading the investigators to the Dawson Forest Management Area. She had been decapitated but the coroner determined that it had been done post-mortem in an attempt to prevent identification. Hilton claimed that he abducted her to steal her bank cards and pen code, that he had repeatedly hit her with a tire iron, causing her death. He 
He later pleaded guilty to her murder and was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 30 years. In September 2009, a hiker found camping supplies believed to belong to Hilton, which were then turned over to the Florida authorities for use in the upcoming Dunlap trial. About a month later, Florida prosecutors charged Hilton with Dunlap's murder, claiming that forensic evidence linked him to the slaying. Despite his efforts to fight his extradition, Hilton was brought to Leon County from the Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison in June 2008 and was remanded to await trial for the Dunlap killing. Attorney Ian Super and Stephen Bin, who specialized in capital murder cases, were hired as his public defenders. At his trial, prosecutors claimed that Hilton had abducted Dunlap from the Leon Sinks geological area and held her captive for two days before eventually killing her and decapitating her body. He had also attempted to eliminate potential evidence by incinerating her head and hands in a fire pit before finally dumping the body in the forest. Hilton's defense team claimed that there was no forensic evidence that he had committed the murder. While the prosecutors countered that Hilton had claimed on tape that he had disposed of Dunlap's body, but then deliberately tried to distance himself from it, after four hours of deliberation, the jury found him guilty on three out of four charges with a recommendation to impose the death penalty. On February 22, 2011, he was officially sentenced to death for the crime and sent off to Florida's death row. In 2012, Hilton was brought to trial for the third time for the murders of John and Irene Bryant. As a part of a plea deal with the prosecutor, he admitted his guilt in the killings and was sentenced to an additional life term without the chance of parole. During the hearings, Hilton described how he had killed Irene on the spot and then kidnapped John to extort his bank details before shooting him in the head with a 22 Magnum and then dumping his body. During and after his trials, Criminal profilers from the FBI and agencies from across the country attended the proceedings to interview Hilton. According to the criminologist Eric Hickey, Hilton was likely responsible for the other homicides before 2007, a claim supported by other veteran profilers who were skeptical that Hilton had begun killing in his 60s. In 2018, Hilton unsuccessfully attempted to overturn his death sentence citing his defense team as dysfunctional and ineffective. Both state and federal authorities denied his appeal.